did it! He's riding the sun. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you forgot were big hits. Let's make some money! <laughs> Come on! All right, happy wife, happy life. Hi, kids! For this list, we'll be looking at films that the general public may not remember were big box office successes. These flicks don't need to have been critically well received or well liked by the public. As long as they made at least double their budget, they'll be considered. What movie did you forget was kind of a big deal? Let us know in the comments below. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Stuart Little. And that's George, your brother. Look, he's already happy to see me. Many a 90s kid will remember this adaptation of the E.B. White book of the same name, but do they remember it raking in the dough to the tune of $300 million? Say, they're really putting some wild prizes in there, huh, Monty? Since we've gotten plenty of live-action CGI hybrids since, it's easy to forget when the combination was nothing to scoff at. The script was also co-written by M. Night Shyamalan, yes, you heard that right, and came out hot on the heels of his even bigger hit, The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. Released in December of that year, Stuart Little essentially had a chokehold on the family market during the holiday season. Can you believe this? I'm locked in the washer! Can you help me? Can you turn this thing off? Why would I turn it off? It's my favorite show. Its success ensured that we'd get a sequel, although that one was not nearly as much of a hit. Number 9. Safe House. This ain't a test, this is the real thing. Much like Liam Neeson, Denzel Washington has built himself up as quite the bankable middle-aged action star. Between projects like Deja Vu and the Equalizer movies, Washington starred in the surprisingly successful and yet forgettable Safe House in 2012. Though it received mixed reviews, the film managed to amass over $200 million at the global box office. You got him. A hell of a job. It managed to succeed in the face of stiff competition like Chronicle and Journey to the Mysterious Island. Since the film paired Washington with Ryan Reynolds, just think what kind of business it would have had if it came out after the first Deadpool movie. Number 8. Vantage Point Vantage Point overcame negative reviews to become a neat little earner for Sony. This never should have happened, except that it did. Released in 2008, the film took in $152 million against a $40 million budget. It managed to do this even though a bigger action flick, Jumper, came out a week before. Crap, I, uh, I didn't expect that. I, di I didn't know. Chronicling the many perspectives of a political assassination, Vantage Point employed a host of veteran actors. Dennis Quaid, Forrest Whitaker, Sigourney Weaver, and others likely drew in the crowds on their star power alone. That said, the film's time-shifting gimmick made for a frustrating viewing experience. Its storytelling approach probably kept audiences from remembering it at all years later. Number 7. The Rescuers While there are plenty of classic titles in the Disney Animation Library, it can be easy to forget about the solid stories that were released in the Bronze Age between 1970 and 1988. Of these films, the most successful one overall was arguably The Rescuers. Penny, you were a brave little girl to do what you did all by yourself. Oh, I didn't do it all by myself. Two little mice from the rescue aid side, is he? Help me. Released in 1977, the family adventure about talking mice initially grossed $29 million domestically. But that's not why we're talking about it. The Rescuers was actually re-released twice, once in 1983 and once in 1989. When all three release box office numbers are combined, the movie accumulated $169 million over its lifetime. Oh, but, but just look at these beauties that she brought up from the cave. Oh, they'll sell for a lot of cold cash. Ow! Oh! Its success likely incentivized the release of the first Disney animated film sequel to come out in theaters, The Rescuers Down Under, in 1990. <laughs> Number 6. We're the Millers We doubt Warner Brothers had any regrets about making this warped crime comedy. 
Yeah. What is this one? What's the one right there? Oh, this? Uh-huh. That's my credo. No regrets. Mm-hmm. How about that? Released in 2013, We're the Millers was the surprise comedy hit of the summer. It raked in $270 million worldwide. That's over seven times its budget. You are making $500,000 and you were only gonna pay me 30? You're getting 30 grand? I'm getting a thousand! But you guys are getting paid? Since it boasts just 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, it wasn't exactly a critical darling. But audiences clearly seemed to enjoy it just fine. Quite a rig you got there, amigo. That is quite a a rig you guys have there, too. With an affable cast that included Jason Sudeikis, Jennifer Aniston, Will Poulter, and Emma Roberts, it's honestly not hard to see why people loved it. All right, happy wife, happy life. Hi, kids. Although a sequel tentatively titled We're Still the Millers was announced six months later, we're still waiting for it. Number five. Father of the Bride. <gasps> okay, please come with me and we'll talk all about our big day, the big okay. day for the bride. Steve Martin family comedies have always been fairly bankable over the years. General audiences may remember that Parenthood and Cheaper by the Dozen did well. Ah, oh, that was money well spent. But they may forget that Father of the Bride, co-written and co-produced by Nancy Myers, was a hit too. The comedy earned $129 million against a $20 million budget. With that kind of money, we doubt Martin's George Banks would be worried about how much the wedding is costing him. I want to buy eight hot dogs and eight hot dog buns to go with them. But no one sells eight hot dog buns. They only sell 12 hot dog buns. So I end up paying for four buns I don't need. So I am removing the superfluous buns. The movie also proved popular enough with audiences to spawn a part two. But that one wasn't quite as successful. George? Don't George me, you two-timing Matahari! Audiences might also forget that both films were remakes of Spencer Tracy, Elizabeth Taylor comedies from the 1950s. Just in case you were curious, the original films turned profits too. Number 4. The Pacifier Between Tooth Fairy starring Dwayne Johnson and My Spy starring Dave Bautista, we've got enough muscular action stars babysit children movies to make a whole film genre. What do you do for a living? I'm a KGB agent posing as a fourth grader. But before those two films came along, we got Vin Diesel in The Pacifier. The Crowbar! Oh, my personal favorite. Ah! The Pacifier! Despite being critically panned, the film managed to rake in nearly $200 million back in 2005. Sure, it's not the kind of film that's warranted rewatches over the years, but it did make an impact in its time. I think it went well. Oh, it's so dramatic! It just goes to show that family comedies can do some serious business when the right people are involved. Now, if only there was some way we could see Diesel's furious pacifier character go up against The Rock's fast tooth fairy. You're going down, Toretto. I'm right here. Number three, Need for Speed. I have no idea where this is going. I just know I like it. I like it a lot. Once the Fast and Furious franchise really started to hit the gas, we had a feeling that studios would want to clone the idea for their own. But since most studios don't have the luxury to rev the engines five times on an original concept before it finds its stride, they rely on intellectual properties. Enter Need for Speed. Spread your wings, beauty! This Aaron Paul action vehicle is based on the racing video game series of the same name. Although it didn't do Fast and Furious numbers, the movie did manage to hit the $200 million mark thanks largely to international markets. Life can be full of surprises. There were originally rumblings of a sequel, but poor critical reception and the lack of a fan following put that prospect in doubt. Sorry, Aaron. Number 2. Hansel and Gretel – Witch Hunters There have been so many dark updates to fairy tales over the years that it's seriously difficult to keep track. Although many try to scale back the darkness a little to appeal to mass audiences like Snow White and the Huntsman, others take big risks and go all out like Hansel and Gretel – Witch Hunters. Starring Jeremy Renner and Gemma Arterton as the titular brother-sister duo, this film took no prisoners. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters had absolutely bloody action sequences and a grim sense of humor. While it was critically panned in the theaters, it paid off in the company's bank accounts. Humans have such ghastly taste. Thanks largely to a great international run, this dark fantasy earned $226 million when it was all said and done. Not bad. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Forgotten. Kind of appropriate that this would get forgotten, no? There are worse things than forgetting. No, there aren't. George of the Jungle. George, George, George of the Jungle, watch out for that paycheck. <laughs> Willow. Big things really do come in small packages. Please watch very closely. Whoopity Ben! Daru! Daru! The Full Monty. Kind of like the British Magic Mike of its time. <laughs> Beethoven. This St. Bernard slobbered up box office dollars. Oh, baby, it's not even Saturday night. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Real Steel. Let's make some money! We're honestly surprised that this boxing robot movie starring Hugh Jackman didn't make even more money. Granted, Hugh Jackman isn't playing one of the robot boxers, but we digress. Real Steel drummed up quite a bit of excitement for something that wasn't already based on a major film property. It nearly managed to bring in $300 million worldwide. I was due for some good luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Bailey, help me put him in the truck. I am gonna go and get you money. A partial reason for Jackman's robot success might have been the fact that its competition was The Three Musketeers. The swashbuckling movie tanked so hard that it earned less money in its opening week than Real Steel did in its third weekend. It was an off day. <laughs> That's my Musketeers for you. Although Jackman's movie received modest reviews from critics, the general audience's wallets made sure the movie stuck around. Can you say, People's Champion? People's Champion? Sounds pretty good to me. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. What the hell should I